Right. So it turned into a giant fight outside the mall. You know, why don't we just forget about the mall? We're not going to be here Thursday and Friday. We're going to Legoland on vacation. Obviously, Lego is the best thing, and it makes sense to go to the Mecca where they are, hence the Lego land, land of the Lego, right? Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to continue our Cloud Native series, and we're going to talk about how Autopilot works. I know we've set it up before and we've showed that, but specifically, we just want to talk, you know, very high-level architecture of how the process works, what it does and what it doesn't do, and how it fits in with Intune and, you know, the uh, edge to join. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to bring back many Legos. I think that would be, that'd be awesome. It's going to be wild. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, and talking about cloud native endpoints and moving to enter ID, join and Intune enrollment, doing provisioning instead of imaging, I think it's really important to understand um, how autopilot works. This is a question I get asked a lot, and it's kind of funny because I started working on the product at its launch, through its release, right, 2017, 2018. You know, even though that seems like a long time for those of us working at it, it's still relatively new in the tech space. So I think it makes sense to kind of talk through how it works, um, some assumptions, what it does, what it doesn't do. All right, so let's start with our PC. Starting in Windows 10 Pro, I believe 1703, probably really didn't get going until 1709. Basically the way the behavior goes is the device powers on. Okay, after it powers on, you are asked to connect to a network. Once you're connected to a network, um, that's when the device starts talking to the autopilot service. Now, this is built into what this is why the version matters. This was built in starting in 1709 um, that it would check. Now, there's a long story about how it worked with different OEMs, but essentially, if you're buying a PC now from any major OEM, Lenovo, HP, Dell, Samsung, obviously Microsoft Surface. So, so obviously, if you're you know using anything from these you know major players, um, it's going to work out of the box. And what that means is, once it's connected to a network, it's going to talk to the autopilot service. All right, what is the autopilot service, and and, and how does that work? Right. So, what happens is the device calls out to the autopilot service. And this service is responsible for keeping track of any hardware registered to an organization. So let's talk about that. Okay, so you have Windows 10 or 11 Pro, that's all that's required, obviously a supported build. Um, and if the device is made by a major OEM, essentially what happens is this. Okay, this process called the OA3 is basically a protocol for making PCs. That's, I'm going to simplify it. If you're these guys, that's how you protocol for building PCs. I spelled protocol wrong. The most common thing that happens when we're building these PCs is activating a product key. Okay, so that's typically what the product is known for, is activating a product key. But what else they do is they generate what's called a hardware hash. So what the hardware hash does is the hardware hash is equal to basically um, a unique identifier based on PC hardware. The hardware hash is needed and it's software generated or generated by the system through PowerShell because PCs generally don't have the same unique identifier like a phone would. So you can't really just use a serial number. You have to use this backend hash that matches the serial model number in order for autopilot to identify the device properly. But this is kind of cool. So we can use this PowerShell command. Um, you'll probably recognize it. We use it all the time in our migration script, right? To generate this hardware ID. So if we wanted to run this right here and call the hardware ID, there is your hardware ID. <laughs> so it's a giant like 4,000 character hash, but let's, let's try to decode that. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so if, if, if we want to uh, take that hardware hash and try to decode it to a string, 
we can say it is system text utf8 get string and we will say oh you know what i forgot the encoding encoding there we go get string system system convert you got to be able to spell i always say that here from base 64 string and we're going to put that in there let's run that so if i call the string uh it's really interesting you can see some of it here it's a bunch of hardware information you can see the firmware uh there's virtual disk information you can see information about the uh, processor here um so i mean essentially that would make sense i've seen stuff about the ram so it's literally just a collection of information from the uh from the system so i thought that's interesting to know so when the pc is manufactured uh the hardware hash is produced and is stored in the autopilot server and it's very important to understand that this it doesn't matter uh this is done on every windows pro machine so sometimes if you'll find a, a gaming pc or you buy a personal computer with uh, pro on it or you buy like a my surface came from uh, the microsoft store for business it has pro that's just how it is these are registered up here now what happens is when it goes to talk right to the autopilot service it basically asks a question is the pc registered to an organization now, if the answer is no, um, nothing happens. And you just go on using the PC normally. Use PC normally, I guess, whatever normal use is of a PC. Because the PC is not registered anywhere. So what if it is registered and how does that actually happen? Because I already told you when they're made with Pro, they're automatically added here. So what actually has to happen in order for, for the registration to occur is your organization. Okay, so this is your organization. I nailed it, right? So your organization can do one of two things. The first thing they can do is they can generate the hardware hash themselves. And you can do this yourself too. This is done with PowerShell. So through PowerShell, kind of like I just showed you, right? You generate the hardware hash. You would upload it yourself via Intune because Intune supports, um, you upload, you see, we do that all the time through device enrollment and then you're good to go. That's not sustainable though. And you know, you're not gonna literally you would have to touch every device. So you probably don't want to do that, right? It's going to take too long. So when an organization wants to purchase a PC, they're going to do that from OEM, partner, vendor, reseller, wherever you buy your computers from, right? So they're going to have to reach out and the reseller actually has a very, uh, they should be set up with a special API to that service. Okay, so the Autopilot CSP API allows the partner to register the PC for the organization on their behalf. But how do they do this without touching every single PC? All right, this brings us to our next point. Is how does that API work exactly and how does a vendor do that for you? So imagine for a second that the Autopilot service has a record of the hardware hash and the PC it belongs to when it was made. That's a little picture of my hardware hash from before in PowerShell. It's not really important we see it. We just know it's a giant right, amount of data. Now, correlating to that, you're going to have a few things. You're going to have the manufacturer of the PC. You're going to have the model of the PC. And you're going to have the serial number of the PC. So what happens now is when the organization has to buy the PC from the reseller, the vendor, whoever, and they actually ship the PC, well, what information do they know about the PC? They know the manufacturer, the model, and the serial number. So what they do is they can then take that information to submit it 
to the autopilot service, the autopilot service says, hey, I found you. And it then takes the hash and uses that to register to the organization's Intune entry tenant. All right, let's go back to our original scenario. Now, when the Windows PC boots up and connects to a network, it'll talk to that autopilot service. When asked, is the PC registered to an org? Well, yes, because when it looks, the autopilot service knows that that hardware hash is registered to the organization because that organi organization info is now tied to it. So now the PC will proceed with enrollment steps because it is registered. And those enrollment steps include enter, join, and Intune enrollment. So that was definitely more of a logistical overview, but it can be complicated. A lot of times I get the question, how do I install autopilot? How do I install Intune on a device? And it, it's very important we understand we're not installing anything. We're looking at um, a registration process. Now for the Apple folks out there, or the mobile experts, you're gonna see something completely recognizable. This is essentially what device enrollment was doing with what's now Apple Business Manager. The manual way of harvesting the hash through PowerShell and registering it is still available. And then at scale, you're obviously going to want to work with a partner. Um, that's going to take care of it for today. If you have questions, let me know in the Discord and we'll be seeing you.